Cattle moving into a field of cover crops equates to more money in the profit column for Bob Ridgely and his two sons who farm near High Hill, Missouri. My, uh, my main concerns or what I want to do with my cover crops is for uh, grazing purposes, but I'm also getting the benefit from the cover with the soil health. Uh, I need, uh, I get a late fall pasture out of this, and then I uh, also get an early spring pasture. Maybe two grazing if, I, if everything works out right. By incorporating tillage turnips, tillage radishes, and cereal rye into harvested cornfields in the fall, Ridgely is able to provide a couple of weeks of late fall forage for his cattle. Then when the cover crops began growing in earnest again in the spring, he benefits from a few more weeks of grazing them while his permanent pasture land is gearing up. Now if I put them on here, I can leave them off my uh, regular pasture and let it grow some more because uh, uh, one thing you can do wrong with your pastures is graze it when it's too, when it's too small in the springtime. You won't have much growth all summer long, but if you can have something like this to uh, graze your livestock on, and then when the grass gets growing better out in your pastures, just go ahead and turn them out on that then. Grazing cover crops is not all about quantity though. Ridgely says there is quality in the cover. That I plant uh, radishes, turnips, and rye in the fall. If you really want to slick up a bunch of cattle, put them on a mixture like that. In the long term, the forage benefits received from grazing cover crops could be secondary to how cover crops help improve the health of the soil. Cover crops are critical elements among the four keys to improving soil health. The four keys are keep the soil covered as much as possible, disturb the soil as little as possible, keep plants growing throughout the year to feed the soil, and diversify as much as possible by rotating crops and using a mixture of cover crops. That's a message that the USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service relays regularly to farmers and ranchers. I think it's kind of the mission of our agency is soil conservation. Whether we're building terraces out on the ground or doing the soil health initiative with the cover crops. Uh, uh, protecting the soil, that's what it all amounts to, keeping the water where it belongs on this farm in, this, in the watershed it belongs to, not, the, not taking the soil down into the neighbors and causing a problem. Healthy soil is alive and it is life-giving. Healthier soils benefit everyone because they hold together better, which reduces erosion and protects the quality of water. Healthier soils allow water to infiltrate instead of running off. They also hold more water, which reduces flooding and provides a moisture buffer for crops during periods of no rain. And healthier soils increase profits by producing higher yields with fewer chemical inputs. And when Bob Ridgely takes his grandson with him to check on his cattle and his crops, he is reminded of another important reason, to preserve and enhance the health of the soil on his farm. Uh, we got to conserve all the soil or topsoil that we can. Once it runs down the hill, it doesn't come back up. You know, I've got uh, two grandsons and four granddaughters that might want to farm one of these days. And when they do, we got to have soil for them to farm. So I think with cover crops and other practices that we use, uh, we're conserving as much as we can for future generations. To learn more about the benefits of cover crops, contact your local NRCS office or visit www.mo.nrcs.usda.gov.